Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah with my guest, Alexa Davidson. This is going to be a phenomenal interview. I cannot wait. Let's get into it. So Alexa, share with the people who you are and what it is that you do. Hi, I'm Alexa Davidson and I am in Charleston, South Carolina, and I'm a nurse writer. That is so awesome. So how did you get to be a nurse writer? What brought you to that place? Well, I can give you a little bit of a backstory of kind of how I got here and my nursing background. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been a nurse for 13 years and most of my experience is in PEDS ICU, but I left Charleston to do travel nursing in 2014 and it was kind of my husband and I, our little gig that we did together because he works from home. So we left town um, thinking it would be like just a couple years at tops, but we ended up being gone for seven years. And oh, wow. we, 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 I got caught in California. That's really what happened. I stayed on staff at a hospital there and we dropped some roots in California and just had a really good time. And the goal was always to come back to Charleston, right? So at the end of 2020, we finally made our way back. And at that point, I was definitely experiencing burnout from being in the ICU all that time. And yeah. then the pandemic happened and it was like, okay, like, I don't know how much like, oh more God. of this hospital stuff I really want to take. Yes. But, so, but then I, so I set myself up by getting a master's degree and you know, hoping I'd do something a little bit more of a professional setting in nursing when I moved back to Charleston. So I come back here fully expecting like, okay, we're going to live our happily ever after. We'll buy a house, start having babies, and I'll just do something outside of the bedside. And it's just going to come together instantly. Well, what do you think happened, Tammy? <laughs> it did not. Definitely. It did not come together instantly. <laughs> No, of course, life doesn't happen that way. So 2021 was, you know, I guess everybody thought it was going to be the year that we came out of the pandemic and it absolutely was not. And for me, we had a lot of personal stuff happen um, within the family and just a lot of challenges that came up. And then coupled with the fact that I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing with my career. And it was kind of driving me crazy that I had this gut instinct that I was meant to be doing something away from the bedside where I was using my creative side, but I couldn't figure out what that was. So I finally worked with a nurse coach career or a career coach for nurses. And then I got into a mentorship program and took a course for nurse writers and ended up, you know, discovering that I have this gift of writing and that I really enjoy it and have a passion for it. So yeah, I, started this business about a year ago. It's called Articula oh, Carmen. So right smack dab in the middle of the pandemonium. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> trying to, you know, trying to rush life along. And thankfully I didn't, I sat with all the, you know, uncomfortable stuff that was happening yes. and just yes. sat with myself and let this come through. And I've got a whole new career now. So so was this a journey that you foresaw in before, or was this something like, did you have like an aha moment saying, you know what, or was the aha moment moving from California? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the start of everything. We, I had a, a series of unfortunate events that forced me to um, have that aha moment, but I actually started seeing, I think on nursing forums, people talking about what they do outside of the bedside. Because at this point, everybody's like, I want to get out, out of, you know, bedside nursing. And yes. <laughs> you know, it's like very common to want to do something different. But um, I think people talk about their career as a nurse writer. And then my career coach set me up with um, the person who has a program um, that coaches people to go from being super clinically minded to now navigating kind of the world of marketing and yes. doing all the things you have to do to start your own business. So yes, uh, took a lot of like courses and stuff along the way. Yes. Cause that's a whole transition. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I'm still making that transition of, you know, uh, 
marketing and <laughs> all those yeah. things that we just didn't have to do in you know this type of career the clinical dead side that we were doing and it's yeah. like now people are like oh you know oh you have to do this and you have to do that and I'm like oh you got to do all that <laughs> I know it's interesting I actually just did a course yesterday I wrote a lesson for a business coach for nurse coaches and so I did the lesson on content marketing and I had to, you know, I'm explaining all of that to these people who are going from the bedside to starting their own business. And, you know, it's intimidating. It's a lot yes. of stuff that, like you said, we don't learn in nursing school. You know, why mm -hmm. would you even know what content marketing is or SEO right. or any of that? But yeah. honestly, I tell people, if you can do nursing, you can do anything. This is challenging um, and it's a grind. It's a different level yes. of hard work, but yes, you can do it. I was going to say to me, uh, I always tell people nursing is like New York. <laughs> you can make it there. You can make it anywhere. It's so <laughs> true. That is so <laughs> true. To me, it's the same, you know, because, you know, people burn out every day. We've met them. We've seen them. We've worked with them, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I, I feel, like, feel like it's like New York. If you can make it in nursing, yes. you can do anything else you want to do. You could probably go and be a president. <laughs> I, know. I know. A friend asked me something like, oh, how are you handling this career transition and like learning all this business stuff? And I was like, well, nobody died today. You know, that's, it's perspective. Yes. Yes. Nothing yes. will ever be that stressful. Yes. And you didn't, <laughs> you, didn't have to, you didn't have to tell your patients like I do. I say, we are all trained in CPR, but none of us want to do it on you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just, you know, because, you, you know, that's stressful, you know, just dealing with um, all the things that we have to deal with on a regular basis with people, number one, you know, and then number two. Um, let's talk a little bit about, because I felt like you were like me, almost like an introvert. So let's mm -hmm. talk about that as far as, you know, moving forward in business and putting yourself out there with visibility and all of that. How has that been, uh, that challenge? Yeah. Well, you know, the, in, the thing I saw that was appealing about being a nurse writer was, you are a writer, you get to hide behind your words and you get to you know, put all these articles out and you don't have to talk to people because going from being in an ICU where you're around people for you know, 12, 13 hours straight, it's like, oh my gosh, I just wanna work from home and just be alone. But <laughs> it turns out you still have to talk to people and you have to put yourself out there like the real version of yourself, right? Like yeah. in nursing, yeah. you're you know, the nurse version of you and you're type A and you're just, getting things done and you're professional, but in this world, people have to see the real side of you, which is <laughs> terrifying, actually. Yes. I was going to say, yes, that, that is so terrifying because like, because sometimes I feel like you don't even really know the real you because you've been this um, yeah. archetype, really. Mm -hmm. You've been this archetype of this person because we talked before we came on, it's like, they people think you're robots when you're a nurse you know you just come in the room and you do whatever 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 and take care of whatever whatever and you know but you're a robot so you know you can do eighteen thousand things and they can just yell them at you yeah, yeah. <laughs> i know it's astonishing that i actually like made friends from work that people actually wanted to hang out with me outside of work because the version of myself i saw at work was just so serious and like you said robotic it's like I, you know, you just don't get to know somebody when they're in that setting. Right. So. It's, it's, it, it, it's funny because it's like when you see people outside of the setting in regular clothes yeah. and you're like, oh, girl, that's what you yeah. look like in regular clothes. I know. You're cute. You know? Know. You right. right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's almost the same as that. It's like, you know, once you step out of that particular archetype and start embodying another one, you know, yeah. that feels better to you, you know? And, and I, yeah. I, I love that about the way you said you, you knew that that wasn't for you and that you had to pivot and you had to make a change. So now where is it affecting you? Um, like for me, 
<laughs> it affects me with the anxiety that I didn't realize that's what that was, to be honest with you, because I never was diagnosed with anything like that. But I did just, I work mental health as well, too. So I kind of, you know, but I saw that and I was like, wait, am I depressed? Am, am, I, am I having anxiety? You know, and then I realized I was like, oh, my God, you know, once I took that step back and just sat with it. So what was the time where you said, OK, I'm done with this. I need to go and do something else. I had to have been 2020 of the pandemic, but there, I definitely, I know there was a turning point in my career when it was a, it was a time I decided to go back for a master's degree degree to get myself out of the bedside, but it was a patient's death that really stuck with me. And just, I think it just changed me. And also in my personal life, you know, all my friends were at this music festival and just, you know, pining over their experience there. And here I am like feeling so alone, handling this death, like not really knowing how to handle it or not like wanting to even deal with it because it wasn't my child to grieve. You know, it was just like one of those awkward things, like, why am I so like affected by this? So I think that was a point where I was like, okay, you know, it's okay to feel affected by something. It's okay to want to move on from doing this. Cause at that point I had already been a nurse for around 10 years. So it's like, it's okay to move on and do something other than what you've always been doing. Mm. Now that is, that's powerful because so there are a lot of people and, and, and I know that it's a generational thing as well, but there are a lot of people that wouldn't, they just wouldn't have that, um, what is the word that gumption really to actually step out and say I can make this change it is okay for me to make this change so now when you did a lot of different things did you also do like any work with energy at all um actually when I was feeling really burned out I was doing I was getting Reiki done and that I honestly, I always thought I was a closed throat chakra because I, I know one time they like really opened up my throat, but they would always get a lot of energy out of my gut. They said I would like hold my, all my tension in my nerves and my stomach, which mm-hmm. makes sense. You know, and your solar plexus. Yeah. Yeah, but me I, too. <laughs> I haven't done, I want to get more into energy work, like working with the chakra system. Um, yes. So I haven't been doing that. I mostly yeah. do meditation. Meditation helped me a lot too through burnout. like. You know, that pre-shift anxiety where you're just like a whole 24 hours before work, you're dreading it. Yes. Like the (laughs) call saved my life. I start feeling like that tomorrow because I work on Thursday. (laughs) After a point, yeah, it just becomes habit. It's like, I catch myself now when I'm not even at the bedside, like on Sundays, like having anxiety just out of sport. It's like, okay, chill out. (laughs) You're not walking into an ICU tomorrow. You don't have to keep doing this. So you're good. (laughs) Yeah, we'll be okay. <laughs> so it, it's amazing because it almost is like we discover that self love for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And we say, you're going to be okay. You know, we just yeah. grab ourselves and we say, it's okay. No, you don't have to go and wrestle that tiger tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Honestly, the biggest form of self-love that I, it took me, you know, 10 years into my career to discover mm-hmm. was creating boundaries. Yes. Like, oh my God. Take us so long in life to figure those out. Yes. Yes. Well, we're not always taught that, especially, mm-hmm. are you from Charleston? Yeah. So yeah, see, Southern the culture. South, especially for us, we're not taught that, especially for women, you know, we're taught, you know, be everything for everybody. <laughs> You know, who cares yeah. about you, mm-hmm. you know, basically. And then once you have kids, there's a whole nother level of that, yeah. you know. But, but the thing is, is when you recognize it, it's good because then you can keep your eyes on it. And then you yeah. can, you know, and if you ever go down that rabbit hole, you know how to pull yourself back. Because that was a thing that I had to do because I'd started everything young because I was just running out the gate like a crazy nut. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, yeah, so I was like, okay, then you realize that as you go, because 
regardless of, especially in, in the type of career that we've done in nursing, people pull so much from us. And a lot of times, you know, we don't even realize that that's happening. And that's why, you know, we feel the way we feel. We feel depressed and we feel anxious and we have all these things coming at us because other people are, you know, putting a straw in and sucking us because they feel our energy and stuff. And a lot of times it's that we don't even realize that we carry that energy like that, but they see it. Yeah. You know, and we, we, a lot of times don't, we don't realize it, of course, and then we don't know how to protect ourselves. So um, tell me about a time when you had a situation that maybe you were dealing with that you weren't quite sure how to do or how to deal with it. Was there a time in your career where you had that and then you started, it almost opened some things up for you? Because I know that most nurses have a, a situation where that has happened and it was like a turning point for them. You mean in nursing or just in life? In life. That's a good question. I guess back to the career stuff, like not knowing what to do with the career transition. Oh, yeah. So wh what happened was I jumped into another um, job that I got that I was super excited about. And I, I think I manifested this job that was like a dream job that was the wrong dream job, if that makes sense. Like I made it happen. Yeah. I used these personal connections and, you know, two weeks into it, they eliminated my position and I was just devastated. So that was like a huge failure for me. And it was not I just didn't want that to happen. And then I tried this other job and it just wasn't a good fit either. And I was just so confused. Like, what am I supposed to be doing? So I think then, you know, deciding to work with career coaches really like helped me put all these pieces of the puzzle together. Like, yes, yes. I have all these skills. I have this experience and a desire, but I don't understand where this is all going. Yes. And having an objective outsider say like, okay, here's how we're going to piece this all together. These are the steps you need to take. And I'm going to hold you accountable. That like really helped um, kind of pull it all together for me. See, and you, have you ever thought about doing this type of work for other women? Cause that sounds like something that you would be really good at. I don't know. I go back and forth. You mean <laughs> kind of like a career counselor, life coach type thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> You know, I feel like a lot of people like you and I end up in that, in a life coaching type of role, just because we see things holistically and it, you know, I guess not everybody has the perspective to see things in a big picture like we do. Right, right. And the thing is, is, you know, you, you, you look, you look at it, we can always look from the outside. You know, like I'm sitting on the outside and I can look at you and say, damn, girl, that you would really make a good person to help people to pull those pieces together. And I mean, you, and you could call yourself whatever you want to because people, you know, we're creators so we can create yeah. who we want to be. Oh, yeah. You, you, like nurse writer, like you can do whatever you want. I can be a nurse yeah. partnership partner <laughs> like you can just make up your own title exactly and it and the funny thing is it catches on <laughs> you see these people yeah. and you're like you're a what you yeah. do what <laughs> you're a career partner <laughs> you're like what what is what is it that you do <laughs> yeah well thank you I'll take that as a compliment because you're the first person who's told me that but I think you know I overanalyze everybody and I love to psychoanalyze and I also study aura colors. You ever do aura, aura readings? Yeah, I, I don't. I I um I don't. It so generally it'll pop up in just a reading that I'm doing. Like I I'll tell them I'll see you know whatever the aura looks gray or whatever, but not mm -hmm. not as a as a thing. No. Do you know what your aura colors are? Yeah. You know they change. So you can, yeah, they can, yeah, depending on how you feel and how you feel and all that stuff. And, you know, because sometimes people can be gray and, and then other times they can be bright red and then other times they can be dark, you know, so it just depends on, 
you know, how you're, how you yeah. are inside. <laughs> yeah. Because I actually did a aura color thing with the lady. Um, I used to live in Arizona because that's where I moved from when I left Columbia. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a lady do one of those or picture things. Mm -hmm. They take a picture and, you know, and, and that's when I found out because I started doing, of course, you know how we do. We started doing research <laughs> and we said, yeah. okay, what is it about this? And then I realized that, you know, auras are fluid. So it's whatever it is at that moment. So like mm -hmm. whatever your aura is at this moment is what it is now. You know, an hour from now, it could be something else. And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's amazing because the thing is, is yeah. um, auras actually show us even diseases and conditions and all that kind of stuff. Oh, well, yeah, I haven't gone that far into it. I don't see auras, but I know like what certain people say are the different personality traits of each color. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that's more interesting than studying like Enneagram types. And oh, yeah, yeah. I agree. So it's, I find it fascinating though. It's just an easy way to like understand somebody off of your first impression, or, you know, once you get to the, know them a little bit more, it's, it's just how you operate with them and how you yes. communicate with somebody. Yes. Yes. It really is. And it, it, I don't know, for me, since I started studying energy and stuff, it's just been just an amazing evolution is what I'm going to call it. It's just mm -hmm. been like an amazing evolution. It's like things just started just evolving for me. And I started just um, really opening up to the gifts that a lot of them I already had, you know, and I'm doing, I actually was signing up to speak at a um, chamber of commerce thing. I was like, who am I doing this? <laughs> you know how you look at it and you say, or you say, yeah, I would like to have some opportunities to speak, you know. And you say that, you know, out into the universe, to the ethers, to whoever's listening. And then all of a sudden they start showing up for you. And you're like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. Did I speak that into existence? I didn't mean it. <laughs> I'm like, I, no, that, that was wrong. I was just joking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. You know, it's like, okay, this, this is what I asked for, you know, the yeah. same thing with, you know, when you're starting to get visible, because I did like a few years ago, I did a, a visibility challenge with this girl and I can't, I don't even know where she is now, but she was like a coach and she did this visibility challenge. It was seven days, I think, which taught me something about myself that, um, I just, I don't like challenges over like five days and I will never, yeah. ever do a 21 day challenge. <laughs> No, I actually did one of those when I first got started. It was a 21 day meditation challenge that I did. Oh. Now I just did it because I wanted to see how it worked. And then I wanted to help people to meditate because people were telling me I can't meditate. I can't meditate. I was like, everybody can meditate. Anybody can meditate. I was like, meditation isn't what you think it is, you know? And so I did this challenge and I said, never, never, never again, because, you know, sometimes you do things so you can learn that that's not something you would like to do. You know? yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. It's like, I'm doing this, you know, and I'm going to do this because I'm not a quitter, you know, but I will never do this again. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, it kind of takes the whole, like, the whole concept of meditation or the fun out of it. Like, the whole point of meditation is to just be. Yes. So if you're forcing it for 21 days straight and like turning it into this marathon or this yes. kind of challenge, yeah. it was like, like a something I have to do, almost like work. Yeah. Because for me, I just decided and I asked and I set my intentions that I need my work to be fun because I could go to work and work, but I don't want that. <laughs> I want to have yeah. fun. I like to laugh, you know. I, I, and I don't want to, you know, have to worry about, you know, people getting offended because, you know, I'm laughing because, you know, laughter is healing, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes you, you want somebody to laugh rather than go pull a gun and shoot somebody, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, that's the thing in these days, especially. <laughs> I know. Yeah. So okay. what's on the agenda next for you as far as the um, writing? Yeah. So since I started this nurse writer business, I've been writing a lot of blogs and 
for nursing companies, but I'm moving now more into getting clients that are more um, focused on preventative medicine. So, and I'm actually finishing up a copywriting course or I'm kind of in the middle of it um, to really like deepen my skills as a copywriter, which is writing to get people to really like take action. So I um, just finished my first project doing like a um, website revision, like somebody's homepage to make it just, you know, make the readers want to take action a little more than the words that were on it before. And so I'm kind of going to these preventative health type of companies. Um, those are the type of people I want to work with, like health coaches, yes. um, just because I see healthcare kind of shifting and it's kind of has to shift, you know, yes. but I don't know if you can feel it, but I can feel this shift yes. happening where you have people who are leaving the bedside and becoming nurse coaches or, you know, dietitians being hormone coaches to yes. help people manage their health, you know, and not just turn Well, because health care, Western medicine is failing people. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're so focused on, you know, just symptoms. It's like, like I told my husband, I said, when you go to the doctor, I said, and you tell them about something that's going on with you, what do they do? They give you another fucking pill. Mm -hmm. They don't want to get to the root of why this is happening because this is new. So it's new. So that means there is a a cause, a reason, a root, you know, and they don't want to get to that. Right. Yeah. So the emergence of people like you that are coming up and wanting to help boost them. Yeah. You know, so that people can, yeah, that's, that's going to be huge. I know. And again, I was kind of going back and forth on that. Like, should I do nurse coaching? And I actually have seen some jobs out in the community with that type of role where nurses go into um, like a corporate setting and mm-hmm. help the employees deal with whatever type of chronic disease they have. So that I see more and more of these nursing roles popping open or even just health coaches in general. But for now, I'm focusing on being that conduit for them as the writer who is doing their content marketing, right? So if you're yes. a nurse coach who um, is starting your own business for the first time and you don't really know what needs to go on your website or- No, you don't. <laughs> Or you, maybe you've had this website for years and you're like, I'm so sick of updating this blog. That's where I come in and serve them so that ultimately people can find them, you know? So you as that a health is nice. successful, but yeah, so patients can see that there are services available yes. that, you know, you can actually spend time with somebody who wants to educate you on your disease process or how to live a healthy life. So you don't develop disease. So that's where that is. That is awesome. Because the thing is, is that's needful because I don't know about anybody else, but I don't personally want to be taking 25,000 pills. No, you you got to take one and then you have to take one for the side effects and then one for those side effects. And then hopefully none of that stuff will kill you. (laughs) Right. Especially after you watch the commercials. <laughs> yeah. And it's just even like what I'm interested in for my personal health is hormone balance. And, you know, cause I'm on my fertility journey, like trying to move into that chapter in life. And so I'm constantly just researching foods and supplements and how to balance your hormones naturally. So think about all the women who don't know that that's even a thing. You know, like the more we get people educated that, you know, may not, you don't have to be sick to consume material and learn about your body. So that is awesome because we need that. I mean, we need that. Um, Have you, have you found Dr. Kim Duramo? No, who's that? I'll send it to you. She's amazing. She's, um, she was a, a emergency medicine doctor or something like that and so she decided to get out of that model in her th- her community is called um mind body community oh cool she's on facebook and she's also she has a big youtube um thing but mm-hmm. she does amazing stuff about that and she talks about how to get our body out of fight or flight because that's basically what we're doing is putting our body in fight or flight something's mm-hmm. wrong you know like when you start feeling something in your body 
something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what's wrong with me. And so she teaches to, to release that and to breathe through it and let it go and allow your body to just learn how to heal itself. Wow. Because our bodies do heal, it can heal itself. That's why how we were created. And so she talks about all that. She's amazing. I actually just bought a, cl- a course from her. Wow. Because <laughs> I was like, yes. I need this in my life because this yeah. is where I want to go. Because I do like acupuncture and mm-hmm. you know that's my, my um, go-to. Matter of fact, I had a frozen shoulder and that was what started it to move and was when I went to get the acupuncture because of course they didn't have anything but physical therapy and I was like I don't really want to be tortured right now but mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like nah we're not I'm not going with that so uh so yeah so I I truly believe that you know we can live a holistic life mm-hmm. and we don't have to be sick and we don't have to be taking all these drugs and stuff yeah, you know and I just I just truly believe that yeah just got to be conscious and yes just take a little time to think about what you're putting in your body. Yes. And that's one thing I had to do um, back here, probably about December, my stomach started just, and to be honest now, I think about it and I don't know, I really don't know what it was. I think it was like a, a, a horrible gastritis. My stomach, it's like it just got angry and didn't want to eat anything. And so I didn't, I had smoothies and protein shakes for like a month. Oh my goodness. Because I couldn't eat anything. My stomach just, everything I put in it hurt. And modern medicine did all the scans and the labs and everything, of course, was what? Perfect. <laughs> They're like, there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, we can't give you any opioids. I'm like, I don't want no opioids. <laughs> yeah. By the way, like, okay. I don't want that. I just want to feel better. <laughs> yeah. Can you do that? <laughs> so, no. So, acupuncture was my go-to in Chinese medicine. I did. And then I found some, um, some supplements. Um, I'm taking this leaky gut stuff that, um, this doctor created Danielle something. I can't remember her last name, but I found it on Amazon and it seems to work. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine, she's an herbalist and she told me, um, try mastic gum. Mm -hmm. And so I've been taking that. Interesting. That has helped. Yeah. Cause girl, it, they couldn't offer me anything. Wow. Because they were like, well, we thought it might have been diverticulitis, but it's not. Hmm. You know, we thought it might have been this and we thought that and we considered this and none of that. So I was like, okay, Uh let me run some energy because that's what we're going to (laughs) do. Yeah. All right. So let the people know where to find you um, and how they can connect with you. I am on Instagram at articulate underscore RN. You can go to my website, thearticulatern.com and on LinkedIn, Alexa Davidson RN. Nice. So nice. I'm so excited. This has been such a joy. I have had so much fun with you. Um, I wish I could talk to you for another hour. (laughs) We could talk nursing. But maybe we'll do something, do like a live or something um, together because I think Think that would be great yeah so we'll, be fun. We'll, we'll stay in touch and what i'll also do is i'll send you dr kim's um thing for youtube and you can go on there that way you can see because she would be i think that would be great i think yeah. you know even if you connected with her even yeah i think it would Love be that. just awesome because the what she's putting out is amazing because i can tell the difference just from that little course and i just bought one of those you know how you just buy a little little um, course already recorded and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just bought one of those and it was amazing. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it again. You know, (laughs) I love that. That's valuable. I'm telling you, it it was so amazing. And she does like, I think she does the live, um, I think it's tomorrow. I think her lives are on Wednesday, like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock or something. But yeah, she's, she's amazing. And it, it's just, it's awesome to see people out there sharing that information because that's what we need. You know, I don't know about anybody else, but I have been looking and studying and researching because I've been on this metaphysical journey. I actually started back to school for that. Oh, cool. And I've been on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm been on that journey because I've been like, okay. And so I just finally like bit the bullet and said, I'm going to do this, you know? Yeah. That's what we got to do. Yeah. I mean, that's such an interesting skill to throw into what you do. Yeah. Like 
Love it. That's Love great. it. Love it. And and one thing I wanted to ask you too, had you, did you have any training in hydro, high, um, what is that stuff called? Hypnotherapy? Hypnotherapy. No, but I want to have it done. I really want to get a past life regression. Have you done a past life regression? I did one online, but a friend of mine told me, and it, it was good. It was good. It was the first time. Well, actually the second time that actually somebody was able to tap in because for me, it's difficult. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably my guides or something. I don't know. But, um, but my friend told me she's in Georgia and she said that there was a girl that was doing it there. She said that you should have it in person. Well, said, send because, me who it is. And if, if I go to Savannah, I'll go to this person. Oh no, she's in Noonan. Oh, I don't know so I'll it. find out. That's, that's like outside of Atlanta somewhere. Oh, okay. Still wouldn't be bad if you, you know if you wanted to take the trip. Yeah. But I'll find out from her and I'll get it and I'll get the information because she said that she was going to a girl that did it in person because a lot of times when you do those past life regressions, you go so far back that they need to, they might need to pull you back and you need wow. a person there. And I was like, oh, because oh. Yeah. mine wasn't quite that, that deep and that intense, but I would love to do one like that. And that's why I was like, mm, I wish I could find somebody <laughs> I'm sure you can. There's some. I'm sure. Some I just have to get in the circles, and I I just start weirdos everywhere. It's not just you know. I'm sure there's some weirdos out there, but you, you gotta be know. ready for it. I've heard you have got to be really prepared for something that. Intense. That's what. That's what she was saying. That's why I said. Mm, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Not sure about that. Yeah, because the one but it can that, heal past traumas. I mean, oh, yeah. That's how you get really deep. And then the thing is too, is that also can show you who you are. Because for me, like the one that, that we did, um, it showed me like I was like the Harriet Tubman of bringing people back from religion. And I was like, what the <laughs> interesting. I was like, okay and so I kind of have been just sitting with that mm -hmm. and just seeing you know you know just asking for direction and stuff and I was like okay so I started kind of started with that because I was like all right because I was raised um Pentecostal holiness mm -hmm. and um and I don't identify with that anymore I identify with um spirituality and so um helping people to bridge that gap that come out of that and into, you know, I call it into the whole big God. Yeah. You know, not the little, little one yeah. <laughs> in the box. I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. But so I think I'm that like, just says you've always been a healer. Yeah. You know, that's probably one thing that's been consistent. So yes. a healer on a different, maybe a, on a more awakened level. Yes. In this lifetime. I think about that because I used to always wonder, I was like, why did I, and it's funny because <laughs> me and this other nurse were working, we said, she looked at me and she goes, why did I do this? I said, what, what, what are you talking about? She said, why did I, why did I get into this field? I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I was why like, did I hey. choose this life? <laughs> why did I choose this like human existence? She was like, I did this. <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I was like, yep, you did. <laughs> it's so funny. It is. It's amazing. You know, when you think I about think it, every right? nurse has had that experience. Like, yes. What am I doing? <laughs> like, why did I do this? What was wrong with me? What was I thinking? You know? <laughs> Apparently not at all. You know? no. All right. Well, anyway, it's All been right. a blast. We have had so much fun. Oh my God. We'll definitely have to do something else again because I see yes. some type of collaboration because it's just been so much fun. So hope that you have enjoyed listening or watching us. Thank you so much and connect with Alexa if you are ready to get your business off the ground as far as um, writing because she's going to be able to help you. So I'm super, super grateful for her joining me today. And we're going to leave it here. So bye now. Bye, guys. <laughs>